Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. I've decided to do a video. I'm doing the video for curiosity. I have nothing against Hobby King and I certainly have nothing against FMS. You could argue that I'm comparing apples and pears. On the other hand, it's just curiosity. I want to see what they're like compared with each other. And what am I talking about? Well, of course, I'm talking about the F4U Corsair by Hobby King and the F4U Corsair V2 by FMS. So what I don't intend to do on this video is talk about their history. I'm talking model history now, not the actual real aircraft history, although I won't be doing that either. The model by Hobby King is not new in as much as several years ago they had one. They had a 750mm Corsair. I'm not saying it's the same one. And it certainly didn't have an orange stabiliser in it. And the same with FMS. Several years ago FMS had this F4U Corsair out and this is why this one is a V2. Do bear in mind that the Hobby King is priced round about £76 and the FMS ranges from anywhere between 100 and possibly up as much as 250 300 depending where you source it from. What they do have in common is that this one, although it's a new release now, is hard to get because Hobby King's out of stock in the UK already. The FMS one has been around a lot longer. That's hard to get because you really have to search for it because it's not in every model shop. In fact, this one I got that from within the UK, released four days ago and they're now out of stock. This one came all the way from Auckland, New Zealand. So we'll just go with the comparison and see where it takes us. Just before I do that, I would like to say, comparing the packaging, the FMS box is longer. The FMS box is fully printed, all sides and on the ends. The Hobby King box is plain white with a sticker put over the front, but it's a box. Mostly they're thrown in the bin. So we're starting with the main wing. And the first thing that's pretty obvious is that the Hobby King wing is smaller than the FMS wing. But we knew that because the FMS says it's an 800mm and the Hobby King says it's 750 My question is, are they? Okay, I can absolutely confirm the FMS wing is exactly 800mm. Let's check the Hobby King wing. Okay, so the Hobby King wing is not 750mm, it's 740 at best. So 10mm shorter than the specs say. FMS specs, bang on. You probably can't see it in this video, but I have examined the panel lining on both wings and they're pretty much the same as each other. A few small minor differences, but they both seem very, very similar. Before I go on, I must say the Hobby King Corsair is based on a World War II Corsair. The FMS Corsair is based on a post-World War II Corsair. I believe it's a Korean War Corsair. So the next thing I'd like to look at, decals, they look fine. But just below the decals you have ailerons and they are significantly different. The aileron on the Hobby King is narrow and long to a point where it actually goes to the end of the wing almost. 14 centimeters in length, 140 millimeters. The FMS aileron is a stubby 12 centimeters, 120 millimeters. And you can see that the Hobby King aileron is quite narrow and the FMS one is quite chubby. While we're on the top looking here they both have their servo leads coming through the middle. I have noticed that the FMS has a chunk of foam 
that acts as a key and plugs into the fuselage, whereas the Hobby King has two pieces of ply glued into the wing, and they have tiny short bits that plug into a ply board in the fuselage. Hobby King wing is held on by one wing bolt. The FMS wing is held on by two wing bolts. The horns on the FMS aileron are not installed, so you have to do that yourself. On the Hobby King, they're already installed. Let's take a look on the underside. Right, well on the underside they're significantly different. I actually prefer the Hobby King colour scheme because it means while you're flying your orientation is so much easier. Whereas the FMS is the same colour as the top which makes it a little bit harder to orientate. Let's start with the Hobby King at the top. You've got your servos installed but you've also got your push rods, your clevises and your horns already installed. Rockets missiles on the Hobby King, you need to either glue them in, there's little indents in the foam, so you either glue them in, you could I suppose embed magnets and use magnets so they're easily removable, or you could use double sided tape, not as easily removable but still they can be removed. The drop tanks in the centre have got these cutouts in foam. The servo wires run through the cutouts, but it's not a problem. The tanks that go in there have cutouts in the mounts, so you know which way to orientate them. But again, do you fit them with magnets? Do you fit them with double-sided tape? Or do you glue them in? I have been told that you can push fit them in and just leave them. I wouldn't do that, because it, over time it could come loose if you do remove them for flying. The wheels are connected through these plastic panels which have got a slit in them and you basically push the undercarriage in and it's got a screw hole that you just tighten down with a screw that has a washer head stamped out of the screw. They're servo mount screws. And that's about it. Panel lining, very good. Moulding, very good. The servo wiring on the Hobby King wing is not covered, it's exposed, you can see it, but it doesn't matter. Then let's move to the FMS wing. Well, you've got your servos, they are installed, they are wired in, the wiring is covered up. You need to attach your horns to the ailerons, you need to put in your push rods, and you need to centre everything up. Then things get a little bit different. The drop tanks actually slide on through a mount system where you have the male part that slides on through the female part, so to take them on and off it's just a matter of sliding them on and off. The rockets, you have four per wing, they actually mount into a removable plate. So this is the removable plate. You glue them in, you can then unscrew and take the block of four away and fly it without that in. Then when you want to put them back, you can just drop them in and screw them back in. The undercarriage for the FMS is held with this clip system. You pull this back, you put in the wiring or the wire for the undercarriage leg and then you clip it shut. The only concern I have with that is if you do keep taking it on and off, maybe the plastic clip will wear out, I don't know. The underside, quite different panel lining. And as can be seen, the Hobby King, they've got the lighter colour on the tanks compared to the FMS Dark Blue, so again it would be Dark Blue on Dark Blue. Royal Blue I think it's actually called, which I'm not actually keen on. Moving over to the rockets, I prefer, to be honest, the way Hobby King have done their rockets. It is a light blue base, because it's a light blue part of the wing they go on, but they are greyed, so they will stand out, and again it helps for orientation. So I like that. The FMS rockets are individual rockets. It always reminds me of submarines when I look at them. Might have a game of submarines before I glue them on. Um, yeah, and they get glued onto that panel, which can be removed. But they're all blue again, 
so I'm likely to paint them light coloured just so they stand out on the wing same as the tanks I'm likely to do something with them but I might actually spray them well, FMS have gone for detail it looks like a proper wheel it looks like a proper tyre and it's got thread on it still got the little C-clip holding it all in that's the Hobby King wheel it's just a foam sponge wheel no detailing there at all really got the C-clip what I do like about the Hobby King undercarriage is the way this front panel is mounted it is glued on and part of the fake undercarriage strut system and it looks quite nice this wire that goes into the wing is quite thick when compared to the wire that is used on the FMS one I'm also not keen on the fact that there's just screws here on the FMS plate and it's not an integral part of the wheel strut system these are much chunkier these are slimmer and finer and I think they'll probably be subject to um, they would suffer more in landings, rough landings Interestingly enough, it might be an optical illusion, but the smaller Corsair's wheels look bigger than the FMS ones. <laughs> In fact, it's not an optical illusion. They are bigger. Only fractionally, though. Maybe a couple of mil. Drop tank's significantly different. These are just the foam mounting. Push it into the wing. If it stays, good luck to you. Or you... Scrape the paint off and glue it in, or double-sided tape it in. Again, doesn't it look like a submarine? Oh, well. Sorry about that. Well, the FMS ones, they seem more streamlined, and they've got this um, wire mounting system. It's plastic, but it's the type of mounting system that they actually had, so the scale detail is quite high on the FMS one. I'm not saying it's accurate, but it's quite high. So there's an actual gap there. And this is the slider, where you slide it onto the wing, and when you want to take it off, you just slide it off. So, um, yeah, I prefer this. I can't show you yet the FMS vertical stabiliser and rudder because it's part of the fuselage so the first thing I would say is the mouldings are quite different the FMS one has these circular things circular moulding across it and basically just has these straight ribs the Hobby King version on the other hand seems far more detailed in that it has the ribs but it also has the indentations so much better moulding than the FMS one or more detail I should say more detail uh, apart from the panel lines going up and down it doesn't have any of the circles that are on the FMS one the other thing I'd say about the Hobby King is this whole surface area including the ends move they're all part of the elevator see here whereas on the FMS version this is the elevator and the rest of this is just static now I for the life of me do not know what's more scale like whether it's just scale having this piece or whether the whole part moved as you can see the Hobby King one this whole part moves the whole area. I've no idea which is more scale or closer to the real scale. I'll have to look it up and I'll leave some text in the video. Let's take a look at the Hobby King one again because on the underside it's a lovely pale colour again helps great with orientation. Horn already fitted that's not a problem at all. Single horn going across 
to the other side so it all moves from a single push rod yeah very nice I do like this I like the molding and everything on that the FMS one you have to install your horns and it has a horn either side that means it's going to have two push rods on a single servo one for each of these some people like that some people don't it's all foam hinged both of them are foam hinged none of them are laminated but again this is dark dark top dark bottom quite bad for orientation So we look at the Hobby King rudder, I like it quite a lot because it's got the lining and it's really well moulded. This is uh, the push rod, or it connects to something, I have no idea what, and it operates there. Ply board, these are glued in. But it's quite nice, quite a nice moulding. Well as you can see the Hobby King fuselage is shorter than the FMS one but that was clear in the specs so the first obvious big difference so here's the obvious first big difference World War 2 three blade post World War 2 Korean War four blade the modeling difference is that this is a single prop that's the prop all four blades FMS 7.5 times 4 you need to get some of these as spares One, two, three. <laughs> I've already done a video about the Hobby King prop. It's not a three blade single prop. Each blade is separate and can come out of the hub on its own. And they are exactly the same as all the blades on the 750 800 millimeter range that Hobby King do and have done. So, if you've got spares for your Sky Raider, for your Mustang, for your Tempest, for your Hurricane, you've got spares for this as well because they're all interchange. Okay, so a couple of things here. I like the panel lining here on the Hobby King version. The panel lining itself is pretty much the same on each one. Got the circle here, here. You've got this rectangle, another rectangle, so it's all very similar. You've got your cowl flaps. In fact, I'll be honest, I think the Hobby King cowl flaps probably look better from my perspective than the FMS ones do. <coughs> Moving along, obviously the tail feathers on this one you glue in yourself, but the rudder and vertical stabiliser on this one is already in place. If we take a look at the vertical stabiliser and rudder, here's the one from the Hobby King, you can see it's smaller, but the nice thing about this is it doesn't have any horns on it, it actually pushes into the fuselage and engages with the link that runs the tail wheel steering. This one is uh, basically clean whereas the FMS one you have to put a horn in it here and connect it to this push rod I have to say I prefer the moulding of the Hobby King vertical stabiliser and rudder There's more decals on the side, I think, of the FMS one. Certainly stand out more because you've got the name Commander Tex O'Neill, Little Lady, Jim Barber. You've also got the Navy designation down here, F4U4 Navy 97266. Whereas on the one above, all you've got are these kill flags. 
And then of course you've got your World War Two and then your post World War Two decals. I do like the V on the tail, little things like that, and I like the light blue touch up here. But the real difference comes when you flip them over, of course, and you can start to see it on this one, the light blue, and then as you flip it over, it's got the cream colour underneath, and this one is still all blue, all navy, Royal Navy it is. Uh, it does have a steering tail wheel. It's not special it's just a, a wheel on a bent piece of wire in fact this one doesn't run very well at all so i'll have to work on it this is fine none of the tail wheels are to scale but i do notice this one is much shorter just a piece of wire whereas this one has got some sort of resemblance of a strut leading to a double-sided holder where the wheel slots in i prefer the hobby king one So here we are looking at the underside, what can I tell you? Well the little hole over here on the Hobby King one allows you to use a 1.5 hex driver and you can just unscrew that and the whole motor comes out. Prop and all, the whole lot just comes out, you can disconnect it from the speed controller. Great easy maintenance, great easy repair. The FMS version does not have that. so. It's not as easy to repair should you wish to go down that track. This is the ply board where those two ply pegs engage and then the wing drops down and you screw into here. Here's the FMS way of connecting the wing. The foam block goes into there, much deeper. And then the wing shuts down and you've got two holes and these are plastic you screw into plastic while we've got upside down here you can see the hobby king or the ORX stabilizer here this is faulty on the first releases which mine is so hobby king give you instructions on how to take this out and how to put the replacement one back in. This here is the hatch where you have to put your receiver and your battery goes to the front and this uses a JST connector. On the FMS model this whole area lifts up so you've got a much bigger area, but having said that, you've got a lot more in it. So these are all your wires and everything. Crikey, look at all those. There's a lot to go in the FMS one. Speed control is just here and this is the stabiliser. It's an FMS home brand reflex stabiliser already programmed and in place as does the Hobby King but the Hobby King one happens to have errors in it so you have to replace it I think all this comes down the battery slots in up there and then in this portion here you have to put your receiver so it should work okay but it's far busier than the Hobby King version. The Hobby King version is really sweet because all you have are these white cables which are signal cables all except one or two. One's the rudder and one's the mode selector but otherwise they just use a single signal whereas of course on the FMS version you've got full wiring And then this also has a JST connector. I prefer this one. It's already got a little grip there for you. Lift it up, I think it's an aerial. And it goes on really nicely. This I'm not so keen with. I've got to put some tape on the back so I can lift that out. It's got magnets either side, but it's so tight in there. 
think you might find you have to gouge some stuff out to get it to sit nicely. As far as the pilots go, I'm not very keen on that one for Hobby King. Just looks a bit toyish. I don't know why. And this one here, to me, looks a bit, bit better. Although I did notice, I think he's way too f far forward in the cockpit, and he needed to be come back a bit. They just glued him in in the wrong position. Well, I hope you found that interesting. I don't know what we can conclude from it, if anything. The only thing I can conclude is that when FMS say they've got an 800mm wing, they mean they've got an 800mm wing. When Hobby King said they've got a 750mm wing, they didn't mean that, they actually got a 740mm wing. But what's 10mm between frames? Well, that's one centimetre. I enjoyed doing it. The panel lining is uncanny on the top of these two. They actually match line for line. The moulding is of course much better on the bigger wing. So they've got more to play with. The moulding here isn't that good. But when you turn them over, completely different. Worlds apart. The difference between these two is so small, and I'm not talking about the 10mm difference in the wing length that this is half the price of this thing at least half the price and when they're back in stock they're the most current 750 millimeter hobby king do so you can get them these have been out for a long time really quite hard to get hold of you do get lucky sometimes and find people selling them but generally i have to search high and low to get it they're different beasts, they certainly are. It will be fascinating to see how they fly compared to each other. So I'm looking forward to that. So thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you on another video. Cheers.